Giuseppe Julian Orlando. Stubborn, feisty, and argumentative. Now, when I first hear that, I'm wondering why anybody likes him. Stubborn, argumentative, and feisty. But Dad had a playful way about him. He was fun-filled. And somehow, while he was acting upset, or he was acting stubborn, or argument, a lot of time that was just the game he played. He was a happy guy. He just liked to play unhappy just to get a little attention. He pissed us off, but he made us laugh. Pissed me off, made me laugh. The other thing is, uh, one of the best things I liked in that obit was legendary ladies' men. I don't know who came up with that, but that was classic. And the one I remember the most is when we were on a cruise to Jamaica. This is when I was an adult and Dad and I went on this cruise to Jamaica. And the funny thing was is that we were the only, I think in the history of the line, we were the only father-son that ever went, right? It's either singles or it's couples or it's even mothers and daughters, but sons and fathers just don't make it. But I'll tell you why he loved it. Because we had tables where there were like 12 or 13 women at it. And they were more my age than his age. So he got more women attending to him on that one week cruise than he could have possibly handled. Um, I thought that was cute. I didn't really see that before. And I saw the attention he got and it was pretty cute. The other funny thing is how often have we sat around the Miller table and talked about his legendary exploits? It's the kind of thing that you normally sit around and talk about to someone who isn't there. It's like talking behind their back. But with Papa, he enjoyed sitting there at the same table and hear everybody talk about him, hear everybody gossip about him. He loved it. However he could garner the attention, he would do it. He was the golden boy. That's just who he was. Now... What's really funny, hold on. Timer! Yep. So, one of the first stories I ever heard he ever told me about was uh, from Chicago. And he said that he always wanted to be a driver for the mob. Now, I'm not sure if trouble was brought to Chicago or Chicago bred trouble, but that's where it started from, I think. That's where he learned to be a little less than perfect, but not enough to hurt anybody. He said, no, I don't want to carry a gun. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to put any, uh, rip anybody off or whatever, but I want to drive. I want to be the getaway guy. So his first uh, inclination is to get in trouble but not a big lot of trouble, just a little bit of trouble. Enough to get the attention, I think. My favorite memories of Papa was Las Vegas. And uh, when I, I went there for my summers and he gave me a job. I had a job at Twin Lakes, Texaco, and then Stardust. And the things he taught me, and this comes, he's stubborn. He would not allow me to say good morning when someone drove in. He would not allow me to say, may I help you? He said, always say, fill her up. My dad was teaching me how to upsell when I was a little boy. I didn't even know. But it was funny because he would not allow you to say that. If you said, good morning, how are you? Can I help you? You would get a talking to. So all of stubborn dad isn't bad. He taught me a great work ethic. The other thing that I remember about uh, Vegas was Nick and Victoria. I saw him grow up a little bit, and uh, it'd always be close to my heart. I look at some pictures and stuff, and it's it's amazing um, what his children have become. And I love him very much. The last thing about Vegas that was funny uh, <laughs> is that at night, Dad and I would watch cowboy movies. And <laughs> the funny thing is, is that 
he got up real early, so he would basically doze off during the movies. And the regular routine was get a cup of coffee, sit down, turn the movie on, watch the credits roll, and within five or ten minutes, Dad was asleep. But somehow, a bell goes off. When the titles start running at the end of the movie, he wakes up and goes get another cup of coffee. And then he comes back. The titles roll to the next movie. And he falls asleep. I don't know why, but that brings a smile to my face every time I think about it. I think that that whole thing in, in, uh, in Las Vegas was a, a beautiful thing. It was wonderful for me. And it was the only time I got to spend appreciable time with Dad. Both at work and then after work. Golfed, if you can call it that. All sorts of fun stuff. But it was the, the really the only time as a, short of adulthood that I was able to spend time with him. Um, you know, I thought of so many stories. But as I did, I thought to myself, well, is it really about any one particular story? And I thought, you know what? It's more about an activity. Conversation and coffee. Who else wouldn't want to sit down and gab with Dad over a cup of coffee? Through all this other stuff, his fun nature just trumped it all. People wanted to see him. Now that's the good part. Drinking coffee with Papa was a joy. Serving him coffee was a nightmare. Ever give him some with a thick lip cup? Oh my gosh, you're going to get a 15 or 20 minute diatribe on that. How about getting him something in, uh, in a clear cup? We took him to, to Gilda's at the Santa Cruz Wharf one time, and they served him cup coffee in a clear cup. And I'm telling you, that pissed him off. That pissed him off. He wasn't having anything to do with that. He opted for styrofoam. He picked styrofoam instead of being able to see his coffee. The other funny thing is at Ellie's. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but Ellie's went, I don't know, about a year ago, they went to like these big soup terrine dishes for the coffee. These big things with thick lips. I mean, they were terrible. And he threw a fit. He asked for the manager. He sent the manager in the back to look for somebody who might have left one of those smaller cup, coffee cups at one time. And then what did he do when they couldn't find it? Opted for styrofoam. That's how stubborn he was. And particular. I think sometimes that stuff with the coffee cups was fun, and I think he was serious sometimes. God forbid you ever added coffee to a cup that still had some in it. Then you would get in trouble. And if you guys don't think I'm serious about this cup thing, ask yourself, who here has ever had dad at his house or her house to drink coffee and now doesn't have a cup specifically set aside for him? Keep that cup in your cabinet. Keep it just in case he shows up. Keep a good thin lip cup for pop. So, Again, it's a solemn day, but I don't want to be sad. I want to celebrate his life. And when we get together, we're going to have a party. Because you know what? That's the way he wanted. He doesn't want us to be sad. He said, he, I, he said, I had a good life. I had a good life. And he did. So let's just remember him for who he was. And remember this. We will never lose him. We will never lose one single memory we've had with him. We may not be able to look forward to more memories to be created in the future. But nobody's taken Dad away from us. We have him. We have him here. So, everybody, I love you. Look forward to when we get together. Keep your masks on. Keep safe. I love you all. Shabbat Shalom.